So, today's assignment is called Advanced Photo Repair. Today's success criteria, I can use Photoshop's repair tools along with adjustment layers and smart filters to restore a low quality digital scan of a photograph. We're going to be using the spot healing brush and the healing brush, which we learned about with the basic photo editing. We're also going to be introducing the patch tool. We are going to remove as much damage as possible from this photograph, the scan of a photograph. There's lots of creases, there's discoloration, there's spotting and acid damage. And we're also going to adjust curves, values, and the sharpness of the details to make it look a little less low quality. So we are going to start by saving this photograph. All you need to do is right click. If you're in Google Chrome, you're gonna right click save as. If you're in Safari, I think you're gonna right click and save to downloads. Save image as. Yeah, that's it. It's just called Damaged Photo Boy. <laughs> and then um, just save it in your downloads folder. So this is, again, it's a low resolution scan of somebody's old photograph. This is its full size, unlike that scan that we had before that was like 1400 dots per inch, like gigantic. You could see the pores on her face. This is the full size that we have of this photograph. So we're going to be fighting against both the low quality of the file and the age of the photograph. Uh, oops, so I am going to, uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to leave Canvas up here in the corner with the steps showing. And I'm going to open Photoshop over here on the side. So in Photoshop, I'm just going to open this JPEG. Open and find damagedphotoboy.jpg. Damagedphotoboy.jpg. Nope. Open. Start by organizing our layers. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this layer. You can see that it's called background because it's the only layer that we have. I'm going to double click on this layer and I'm going to rename it to original so that we know that this is the original photograph. Once you have renamed that, you're going to duplicate it. A couple of different ways to duplicate the layer. I'm going to do a right click, duplicate layer. If you don't have right click or secondary click enabled, you're going to hold control on your keyboard, left click, and go to duplicate layer. We're going to name this duplicated layer edited copy. Edited copy. So now we should have two layers. They should be identical. Two identical layers. One called original and one called edited, edited copy. Edited copy. If you 
have like a spare like empty background layer at the bottom or something like that that's you can just delete it it's fine it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt anything or do anything All right, our next step is very important. We're gonna select our original layer and much like we did with the last assignment, we are going to convert this to a smart object. Right click, convert to smart object. You'll right click the name of the layer and it's like a third of the way down this really long list of stuff. No, fourth of the way down this really long list of stuff. <laughs> so does anyone remember from the first exercise why we convert this to a smart object? Why convert a layer to a smart object? Anybody remember? What does Photoshop not allow you to do to a smart object? What happens if I try to paint on it? Won't let you edit it, right? Can't edit contents. So why would I want to make sure that I have an original layer that I can't edit? So I can look back on it. Nice. So I have an original layer that's a smart object so I can't accidentally edit it. So we've got our two layers. Now we're going to make two adjustment layers. The first one is a black and white adjustment layer. To remind you where the adjustment layers are, I'm gonna zoom in here. Down here at the bottom of our layer panels, we've used adjustment layers before. We've used a solid color adjustment layer before. Black and white is in this third section here, the color adjustment layers. Um, if you have the edited one selected, whatever layer you have selected, the adjustment layer will go up of it. So if your adjustment layer ends up somewhere else, you'll have to move it to the top. So do we want it above everything? You want it above everything. So if it ended up down here, below your original, you can just click it and drag it back up to the top. So for our black and white adjustment layer, uh, we have all of these colors and the properties, but we don't need to deal with any of this. We're gonna leave everything to the default uh, because the original photo was sepia tone anyway, so we don't really need to deal with any of this. Um, instead, we're just gonna jump straight to our next adjustment layer, which is going to be a curves adjustment layer. So same button, but it's gonna be in the second section, which is the contrast section, and you're gonna find curves. It's the same place you found the black and white, it's just in the second section instead of the third one. Curves. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how the curves works. We don't have to get too deep into it, especially since we're working with a black and white image. Okay, so we've got these three peaks here. Nope, I'm going to just step up here. We got these, this is a graph. We all know what a graph is. We've got these three peaks here. Whoops. This is our lightest tones. This is our mid-tones. 
and this is our darkest tone. As you can see, there's not a lot of dark tones in the image, so they're small. Lots of mid tones and lots of light tones, so they're, they're tall. This line controls the value of these. If you push it up, they get lighter. If you push it down, they get darker. Like any graph, you can put multiple points on this curve. You want to create three points, one for your lights, one for your mid values, and one for your darks. And you want to adjust your curves so that you can still see the details in your lights and darks, but they are less washed out. So you want your darks to be darker, but not so dark that you lose your details. And you want your whites to be lighter, but not so white that you lose your details. In general, your curve on something like this is going to be an S shape like this. So the point of our curves layer is that we really want to bring out the contrast in the damage of the um, creases so that it's easier to repair. So now that we have our adjustment layers in place, which are going to help us more easily see our um, the damage that we're going to be repairing, we are going to go to our edited copy layer, and we're going to be working directly on this layer with the patch tool. So the patch tool is hidden under your spot healing brush tool and it looks like a little patch, like something that you would sew onto your jeans or onto a jacket or something like that. So the way the patch tool works is that you draw a selection around what you want to patch, and then you drag it into an area somewhere else in the image where there is no damage but where the color or value is similar and it will do its best to replace the pixels in the patched area with the pixels that you dragged it to so you can kind of think of it like if you had paint on a canvas and you accidentally scratched some of the paint off you could use some paint that you put somewhere else to try to patch that area. So I'll show you again with another part. Let's do this big section up here in the corner. I'm going to select it with my patch tool. When I click in here, it's going to let me drag this selection and I'm going to drag it somewhere where it's not going to pick up any extra colors. Maybe over here. And it's going to patch in as much of the information from where I dragged it to as possible. Now it also patched in this bit of damage here but I can go back in and fix that. So we usually use the patch tool when we have large sections of space where something like the spot healing brush wouldn't work because it would be too um, 
too large or maybe too lengthy of a space for the sample to work. So this allows you to take a larger, specifically sized sample rather than just a circle. So I'm going to do this big spot down here at the bottom. I'm zoomed way in. We're just like full pixels now. I'm just going to select all of that and drag this up somewhere. So what you'll notice with the patch tool is that you pick up all the imperfections that you patch. So I patched in dots that were um, in the space that I patched. So I'm going to have to go back in and fix those dots. But we're taking care of these big creases first, and then we're going to go in and do the little dots. But you can do the patches in pretty big chunks. You want to kind of avoid going off the edge if you can. You're going to get weird artifacts like that. And you're also probably not going to be able to patch on the hair as well, or on the ear. But you can easily take care of the creasing in the background and on the shirt. You can do a little bit of it with the patch tool. You're just going to have to patch in very small portions. If you do it in fairly small portions, you can get you can use the patch tool on his forehead um, and the lighter part of his face. But once you get over to the left part where the creases are really dark and bad, really have to go in and fix them with the healing brush tool first. Um, because if I try to patch this, it, we're going to get some really funky, some really funky stuff going on. So you can, you can try to do a little bit of patching in the hair, but I, it leaves like weird chunks that are probably better done with another tool. Now the reason why we had to create a copy of our layer is because the patch tool only works destructively. But in order to use our um, spot healing and healing brush tools non-destructively, we need to go ahead and make another new layer. And in order for it to work the way we want it to, it needs to be above all of our other layers. So most of the stuff on his face you can just do with the spot healing brush. You just need to work in... Whoop. You just need to work in... Gentle swaths. I think I'm going to use uh, probably healing brush here. No. Things are 
you're getting way too smudgy. Too smudgy. Um, it's going to end up looking smudgy because of how low quality the original photo was. This is an exercise in how good enough can you get it <laughs> based on how bad it already is. So for those of you still following along up there, I have created a new layer above all of my layers that I am using my spot healing brush and healing brush tools on so that I can non-destructively um, fix the extra difficult parts around the ear and eyebrow to the best of my ability. Some of this is going to be guessing. Yes. Just do your best. Get rid of as many as you can so that it they're less distracting. But remember that the whole image is already very low quality. So there's only so much you can do already. Things odd there. Whoop.
All right, for our last step, we are going to be applying a high pass filter. First, we need to make sure that we have a new copy of our edited copy layer. So we are going to go down to duplicate layer. We are going to name this high pass filter layer and we're going to go up to our filter and choose convert for smart filters. Photoshop is going to let us know that the selected layer will be converted into a smart object which is fine. So it's a smart object now which means I can't directly edit it. And I'm going to go to filter, other, and high pass. Now this looks kind of weird because we do have a edits layer here from when I did non-destructive edits on their own layer, but when it's done, it will look fine. So ignoring that, uh, we are going to set our radius to somewhere between 2 to 2.5 pixels. I did 2.2, so 2.2 is fine. And what you'll note here is that um, most of our values are this medium gray, but our sharpest details are either black, dark gray, or white. I'm going to click OK. And what we want to do with our high pass filter layer is we want to apply a contrasting blend mode to it. So we're going to apply an overlay. So now that our blend mode is set to overlay, we can turn this on and off. And you can see the difference, especially in the hair and eyes. The high pass filter allows us to sharpen the details of the image. Without the filter on, everything looks very soft, especially if we zoom into where the eyes are. The eyes kind of blur in, this sort of blurs in, and with the high pass filter on, there's much more contrast. Obviously with a higher resolution photo, high pass filters might not be as necessary, or you may want it only in certain parts to focus on maybe the eyes or a specific part of an image that you want to accentuate, but in this case we just want to make this photo as um, nice looking and crisp as we possibly can. So I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer a little bit so it's not too crispy, maybe 75-ish, 72. And then I'm going to look back on all my layers and see if I still like everything. Maybe go in with my curves. Now I have to be careful because I did do all of these edits on top, whoop, on top of these. So I edited these on top of the curves, which means that all of my edits um, are on top and keeping these in mind. So if I change my curves at this point, it is not going to affect my edits layer. And if I move them up, this is going to be a mess. So I need to make sure that I'm happy with this first before I do my edits. Alternately, I could have done my edits on this lower layer but without any of this selected. And there we go. We're just gonna file export, quick export as a PNG.
pop that into my assignments. And that's it.